Welcome back to Is It Still Good, the channel where we watch older films and let you know if they still hold up today. We are going to watch a film I've always really, really dug. This movie's been in my kind of Hall of Fame in my mind for a very, very long time. Now, upon a rewatch, will it make the Hall of Fame playlist? We shall see. But the movie I'm talking about is 1995's Seven. Rated R runs two hours, seven minutes. And this one's directed by David Fincher. I'm a huge fan of his directing style, written by Andrew Walker. Stars Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, Andrew Kevin Walker, and others. Arlie Ermey's in it. That's not even my desk. Gwyneth Paltrow and others. So the synopsis for this one is a film about two detectives desperate hunt for a serial killer who justifies his crimes as absolution for the world's ignorance of the seven deadly sins. The movie takes us from the tortured remains of one victim to the next, as sociopathic John Doe sermonizes to Detective Somerset and Mills one sin at a time. The sin of gluttony comes first, and the murderer's terrible capacity is graphically demonstrated in the dark and subdued tones characteristic of film noir. The seasoned and cultured but jaded Somerset researches the seven deadly sins in an effort to understand the killer's modus operandi while the bright but green and impulsive Detective Mills scoffs at his efforts to get inside the mind of a killer. Pretty cool, the tagline was long is the way and hard out of hell leads up to light. It's a crime drama mystery thriller, like I said, rated R, and always been one of my favorite films ever. Music done by my boy Trent Reznor, Kevin Spacey starring as John Doe, and based on kind of some real life events that are kind of interesting. For example, Kevin Spacey was Me Too'd, by all these people uh, saying he allegedly did something to them. He was uh, removed from House of Cards, which really bummed me out at the time because I was like super into the show and I was like, oh, couldn't they have just done it right after? I wanna see how it ended. But there's like this weird thing going around about the people that have accused Kevin Spacey winding up dead. And it makes this film even creepier when you rewatch it. I noticed that on a rewatch. I was like, yeah, geez. Kevin Spacey's even scarier now that he is actually a scary dude in real life. But Morgan Freeman's amazing in it. Brad Pitt's amazing in it. He's really good, very intense. He plays kind of like the dumber detective very, very well. He was nominated for an Oscar. This movie, when I first saw it, really kind of blew my mind. You know, and that's the thing, you know, you watch these movies once, you get the twist at the end, but then it becomes part of like pop culture zeitgeist and everybody's going, what's in the box? What's in the box? And you're like, yeah, I get it. What's in the box, right? I saw you with the box. What was in the box? It's almost like because we universally love these films, it loses a little bit of its luster when we all kind of know what's going on. As a matter of fact, the first time I watched this, the whole film blew my mind. I thought it was incredible. But I showed it to somebody who saw it for the first time with me, and she guessed the twist the whole way. So it's kind of like a, a tired trope, and it's been done a lot since. But I think it was very well done. This movie's still outstanding. Now, is this one going to make my Hall of Fame playlist? I don't know. Stick around. Let me try to sell you a book and we'll talk about it. Okay, hopefully you guys bought one or two of my novels. And remember, the Unkillable Joe audiobook is available on Audible now. Check it out. Okay, seven. It's got really good pacing. Pace as well for two hour, seven minute run time. It, it moves right along. Each scene informs the next. Shot very well. Sound design is excellent. Uh, the sound design really stood out to me on this watch as being very, very good. David Fincher always has a great use of color and shadow. And I really enjoy his directing style and pretty much everything the man's ever done. I've appreciated. And I really think that this was like Morgan Freeman at the top of his game. You know, he's just outstanding. Kevin Spacey, outstanding. Kind of like Hannibal Lecter in the first Silence of the Lambs. Steals the show, but he's only on screen for X amount of time. Same thing with John Doe here. I don't know how much screen time he gets, but it's not much. But when he's on screen, you're staring at it. And very, very suspenseful. Just a cool overall movie, still held up, if you ask me. So IMDb gave this 8.6 out of 10. And would I agree? You know, it's funny. I'm just ever so slightly below it now. I'm at an 8 point out of 10 on 7, which is still an amazing film. Will this make my Hall of Fame playlist? I'm going to need to think about that. 
it's right on the line. Kind of like Gladiator. Gladiator was right on the line too. This is a bit higher in my opinion than Gladiator. I'd rather watch Seven than Gladiator, but they're both really, really good movies. It should be up there. They're right up there. But rewatches are different and time makes you feel differently about each film, right? So that's kind of the point of the channel. Upon this rewatch, I got an 8.4 out of 10. That's where I landed. It's still really high score. You definitely should watch it. If you've never seen it, you're in for a huge treat. But just outstanding, right up my alley. I'm into that darker stuff. I like it, but I just feel like when you know what the twist is gonna be, it really takes out a lot on a rewatch, right? And a lot of movies are that way. There's some movies, and this is something I've been struggling with. There's some movies that are amazing. You can watch them all the time. And it's like, well, what makes this rewatchable? Because that's something I'm trying to capture in my books. I want them to be read and reread and reread and reread, not just read once and put on a shelf. So I want to make things that you could revisit and glean new aspects of on a rewatch, reread, right? And for me, Seven loses a little bit of its luster as the rewatches happen. But it's still an outstanding movie. This got like Trent Reznor going as a composer. And uh, I just think he did an outstanding job on the soundtrack. David Fincher just rocks. Fine, fine film. You let me know in the comments if I should add this to the Hall of Fame playlist. If you would. Because it's right on the line for me. And I can't tell if I'm going to add it or not. I think I will. But I may not. So your comments will help. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I love you. Thank you for buying books. That's how you support the channel. We do have a Patreon. It's your call. You could also support by buying the books. But anyway, enough rambling from me. I will see you guys next week on Is It Still Good? Ha 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 ha!